Hi, I'm Kelly. As a life coach, I've noticed that the work I do with people isn't about their relationships or their jobs. It isn't about their kids or even how to find a way to get all the laundry done. All the work we do together centers around finding the answer to one simple question. What does it mean to live a fulfilled life? Join me as I explore this question and more in conversation with others in the Fulfilling Life interviews with me, Kelly Dahl, as your host. Hello everyone, it's Kelly again, and I'm here talking with Flora Bowley about what it means to live a fulfilled life. And Flora, I am so thrilled to have you here with us today. Thank you so much for being here. I would love for you. Oh, thank you. Um, please share with everybody a little bit about yourself and the beautiful work that you do. Sure. Well, yes, thanks for having me. It's great to be here with you. And um, so my, my job is um, multi-dimensional now. I, I used to just be a painter. Um, for many, many years, I made a living um, creating and selling paintings, mostly through galleries. And about three years ago, I started um, licensing my work on like products, um, and then I also started teaching workshops, which ended up taking off in this way that I never ever could have predicted, actually, but um, it's become a pretty major part of my life these days. Uh, I teach uh, in-person workshops all around the world, and then I also have an online course. Um, and then I wrote a book as well a couple years ago, or, yeah, just over a year ago it came out. So i um, doing a lot more writing these days and um, just keeping up with still painting and doing live performance painting and teaching all the workshops. So Wonderful. lots of stuff going on. <laughs> lots of stuff, but all with this very creative um, route through all of it, which is something that I admire a lot. And um, the, the artwork obviously is a strong theme through everything you do. Um, so it's wonderful to have you here and I'm, I'm really excited to talk about what living a fulfilled life looks like for you and um, how art and creativity are a part of that as well. So I'm going to throw you my first question for the interview, okay. which is the big one. Um, what does it mean to you, Flora, to live a fulfilling life? Yeah, I've been thinking about this question. It's such a good one, um, and I and I, I always I seem to come up with like both this macro, like big picture answer, and then this more specific micro day to day mm -hmm. kind of answer. So mm -hmm. I think it's all about finding actually the integration of those two. So when mm -hmm. I think of like big picture stuff, it's like life purpose, um, yeah. which has been a big one for me. You know, I. I as I said a minute ago, like I was a painter for so many years, which I thought was my dream job and like the most fulfilling job I could have. But actually, after a number of years, I got to this point where I was lonely. I was in my studio all the time, like not connecting with people. And so I had this big like moment of realizing that my dream job wasn't really my dream job. And that and I realized what was really missing was like connection to people and like this idea of service and like being in service and making a difference and helping people and all those kinds of things and so you know that sort of led me to teaching which has now opened up a million more worlds um, to me and and now that I'm in this reality I really get that this is what is fulfilling to me and it's those things it's it's making a difference it's sharing my passion um, really getting clear on like what um, my soul needed um, as far as work goes was like huge for me because I thought for so many years it was just like oh making paintings that's it you know yeah. and like what my soul actually needs is to feel like I'm serving and that I'm, I'm like helping people in, in whatever way and the way that I do that is through helping people find their own access points to creativity and freedom of expression and all those kinds of things so um, yeah that's like the big picture stuff and then on the daily, it's all, for me, it's about, like, finding that balance. I don't even, I say balance, and then I'm like, maybe not balance, but, like, <laughs> uh, you know, because I'm like, what, I don't even know. I right. Don't even know what that means. 
like there is no such thing in my world really no. even as a Libra I don't even have it but um, <laughs> I think of it more as like harmony now you know which is mm -hmm. like there's a harmony between the pieces so for me you know if I can make art or do something creative whether that's writing or even just like taking a walk and taking pictures you know something that's like you know accessing my creativity and then if I can do something that is with people in some way, whether that's like tea with a friend or, you know, going to a potluck or whatever, just some, some of the human connection. Sometimes it just happens online. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, self-care, like yeah. walks or massage or yoga or like some kind of exercise, like something where I'm just really uh, treating myself well in my, mm -hmm. in my human form. Um, if I can have like those pieces throughout the day, then like that's on a daily like scale that brings me so much fulfillment and I swear as I get older it's like the simplest things can bring me that <laughs> you know it's like just taking time to write in my journal in the morning or like lighting a candle when I'm eating dinner even if I'm by myself you know like it's like those little things yeah. taking a bath with my oils like stuff like that um, brings me like so much pleasure and joy and fulfillment um, it's amazing yeah yeah <laughs> it's, and I, it's I yeah. I love how you put it as macro and micro because I, to me that's such a part of it too. It's like this greater purpose, this greater sort of overarching thing that we're alive for, you know, like our purpose in life, which never really gets answered completely, right? Because it shifts and it may shift for you again and it may shift, for it, I mean, I know it will shift for me again, but thinking about it in a big way and then the day-to-day, -day, because without the day-to-day -day, you can't even think about those bigger things. Exactly. That's right. I know. It's like if I don't, if I don't take care of my body, then I can't be in that place of like doing my soul's work. It's also, it's also connected. But you know, there's there's really those basic pieces of the of the formula. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned that that um, there was a point where you you felt like you were really living your life's purpose as a painter, and that creating art was what was it for you. But then something came up that that shifted that a little bit um, and you mentioned lonely and I know a lot of times before these changes come it can be from a place of loneliness or a dark time or something like that um, mm -hmm. what what do you think helps you or helped you at that point to listen to that greater desire that came up um, you know what it was so it, it just it was so strong. Like it, it started as a little inkling of being mm -hmm. like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> all these years, you know, it's like have all all of this time I thought I was working towards this thing, and now it's maybe not the thing. Like it was like this almost feeling of like, "Oh!" Uh, but then I, you know, I surrendered, you know, to the fact mm -hmm. that like everything I've done, you know, everything I had done was leading to something and that nothing is wasted blah 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 and as you said as you pointed out like the thread in all the work I do does stem from my work as an artist mm -hmm. right even though it's like now I'm a teacher and a writer and all this other stuff um I had to paint for 18 years you know I had to go on my my deep soul journey of me in the canvas alone <laughs> for all those years to like learn truly, truly, really invent the process that I now share with all these people. So, yeah, um, yeah so I kind of, I quickly got over the like, uh-oh feeling, and then I just realized, okay, like something else is coming, and I have to just be open to what what's coming. I, I knew something was, I mean, I'm a pretty intuitive person, and so like, I could feel, I could feel it on the horizon, you know, like, mm -hmm. there's going to be a big change. Wow, I don't even know what that is. Um, but I had a, I had a feeling that um, it was going to all be about who I met, like the connect, the human connections I made with people, mm -hmm. and that those connections would open doors. I don't know why I knew that, but I did. <laughs> and yeah. so it was. It was like I met Anahata Kotkin, who owns Papaya, which is this company I work with doing licensing. And you know, it was a, it was a conversation over breakfast where we were talking about my conundrum of not being feeling fulfilled and she said what about teaching and I was like oh and I hadn't even ever once thought of it honestly before that point and I was like oh teaching maybe and I said maybe and she wrote a blog post about me being like their new artist and at the very end said something about she's teaching or she's thinking about teaching workshops and then suddenly the next day like my inbox was filled with people wanting to take the workshop 
<laughs> and I was like, okay, like that, that's not a sign. I don't know. That's what, pretty blatant. So, <laughs> it was so blatant. And I was like, oh my God, okay. And so, you know, it was really just in like that minute that everything changed. And I got invited to teach at um, a workshop on the East Coast. And I showed up totally clueless as to how that was going to go <laughs> and how to teach painting. I didn't really know, but I, I know my process. I know my process quite well, so I um, right. I just dove into it, you know, and then it just opened up um, from there. You know, I got a book offer two weeks later. It's just been like the wow. universe is just like, grrr, like everything has aligned in the most beautiful, effortless way. As soon as I listened and stepped onto that that path, you know, of right, like what I really needed to really feel fulfilled. So. It's been pretty interesting, but but at the same time, all those years of thinking it was something else were super important, you know, and right. being like sort of a like a truth seeker, um, you know, self help junkie type person too. All those years, mm -hmm. which I always thought was totally separate from my creative process, which is hilarious. Right <laughs> which is funny knowing your creative process now that 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 would ever be able to be seen as separate. I know. <laughs> like, you know, I was young and I was like, well, there's that part of me and then there's this part of me, right. like, what, you know, but now it's like <laughs> my workshops and my work that I share is just absolutely this integration again of, of those things that I've always been interested in. Right. So just, I think that's such a key part of finding fulfillment is like really acknowledging what truly brings you alive. You know, like what like really gets you excited? Like, what did you do when you were a kid? Like, yeah. what did you, you know, what, what did you want to be when you grew up? When you, like, that kind of stuff. Right, right. Um, I think that's so important, and I think it's so easy in the culture that we live in to ignore that and, and mm -hmm. think we need to be more logical or be more financially, uh, you know, uh, secure, whatever it is. Right, but, uh, right. Uh, so I, you've mentioned that that part of it was listening to what your you, your body and your mind was asking for this sort of hunger in your soul, but also the uh, coupling that was surrendering to what it was that you were what you were hearing, which I think is such a key part too. Um, yeah to listen and then surrender to what comes, which then creates your that opening that can happen for whatever might yeah. might be there. And then I love, I love how it just all kind of flew right into your life. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, um, you know, surrendering is the key thing in my entire painting process. You know, it's all about not knowing what you're going to do before you start. It's all about being present in the moment to what wants to happen and what feels good and where the flow is. Like, those are all my sort of catch phrases for the process. And so, you know, I've learned, like without even probably consciously knowing it, by painting in that way for so many years, it informs the way that I live, you know? And so when I do come up into those places where I'm like, ah, I need to like know, or I, you know, I need to have control, I'm pretty good at, at going, okay, actually I know how this, <laughs> I know how this thing, these things work. And I know that a lot of times you have to let go to let, yeah whatever's supposed to happen, happen, which is exactly what happened. Right. And that coupling of surrender and trust too, right? That it will work out in whichever direction it ends up going. And that's what's supposed to happen. Um, you mentioned a lot about the things that help you stay on this path, seeking fulfillment, that you're listening to yourself and you're taking care of yourself, even in, in little ways every day. Um, I'm curious, what are some of the things that get in your way as you are trying to live a fulfilling life? <laughs> totally good question. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it's like, it's when my priorities get out of whack. Um, mm. Like I'm, I'm sort of an overdoer, <laughs> over, overworker, overdoer, um, overachiever type person. Mm -hmm. So my, um, my work is really to you know, to soften and to take time to take care of myself and all those things that I was saying work for me, but mm -hmm. I have, you know, I can easily put in a 12 hour work day and like, mm -hmm. oh, not going to go to yoga for whatever reason. And oh, no, da, 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 you know, all the just excuses that get in the way of, of finding that, that harmony place. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know, and I can get, I can get sucked into, you know, four hours of answering emails and yeah. that kind of thing. So 
you know, recently I, I got an assistant, which is was sort of a long time coming because yeah. I've been doing everything myself forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just to be like, okay, like someone else can help me. And, you know, mm -hmm. she's just been a gift in so many ways. And I keep, I, she keeps saying like, I can do that for you. I can do that. And I'm like, oh yeah, right. Like I forget to utilize her still because yeah. I'm not used to having support but um, right. yeah just like that mentality of like I have to do everything myself and it has to be hard and mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm gonna put all kinds of like self-care on the side like those are those are the things that get my way you know I'm getting yeah. better but <laughs> yeah so um, what do you think helps you get back into the habit I know I, I mean I suffer from the same thing I know these things that help me immensely um, and they're really very, very simple, um, as simple as making my bed. You know, if I go too many days without making my bed, things go chaotic. Um, so what are some of the things that help you get back to those habits that, that keep you feel, feeling good and feeling fulfilled? Besides an um, assistant who reminds you. <laughs> Maybe that's one of them now. <laughs> You know, it's like you said, it's the simplest things. Um, for me, if I can start my day with a short meditation, even if that's five minutes or mm -hmm. even if it's five breaths, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm a lot easier on myself. I used to be like pretty hardcore, like with, you know, practices and things like that. And then it just became this battle around like, if I don't do my yoga meditation practice, then I'm a, then I'm feeling guilty, and I realize, well, yeah. that's not really the, <laughs> it's not helping the situation. So, um, you know, I'm easy on myself, and I take those moments, um, even if it's standing in the grocery line and like closing my eyes for a few breaths, and like I do a lot of like grounding, like visualization of like grounding and like breathing, and it's the simplest. It's truly the simplest. It's like that kind of stuff 101, but it's. Um, yeah totally helpful, you know, and, you know, just getting myself to take a walk around the block, you know, yeah. like, just like close the laptop, <laughs> go for a walk, breathe, like, don't take my phone with me, you know, like, just to really like unplug and, and yeah. like ground out. I'm every time I spend any time in nature, whether that's looking at the gardens in my neighborhood or the park or the woods or the beach or whatever, that's a huge reset button for me, mm -hmm. like big time. You know, it's like, oh, there I am again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, it's, it's, I'm curious, too, how you, um, I mean, you, you, you hinted that you used to be kind of strict with yourself about these sorts of um, mindfulness and, and body practices that helped you going. Um, but, you know, I talk a lot with clients that I work with about, you know, don't, don't overcomplicate it. If it's two minutes, awesome just sit quietly and if it's two minutes like in a closet <laughs> or in the bathroom bathrooms are great place you know that's that's good so I'm curious what helped you shift that um so I have a similar thing too I used to think it had to be perfect and it had to be this strict practice or it was all for naught right um well I think I just honestly I just got a lot busier you know as we do um, yeah <laughs> in life you know uh, since I started teaching in the book and the workshops it's like suddenly life just got really really full whereas before mm -hmm. I was painting <laughs> pretty much that was my main yeah. thing yeah um, so like suddenly I had like four jobs instead of one and so it was, I was kind of like I had to I had to ease up on myself I had to just be more gentle and I'm also preaching that in my workshops like being gentle mm -hmm. you know not beating yourself up like really that the root of my whole painting process is actually self-love you know like really getting that and yeah. getting that you know so, so suddenly it's like when you're teaching something um, or writing about it or whatever mm -hmm. form it takes it's like when you're teaching it suddenly the spotlight is on you you, you really have to look at yourself you know am I yes. walking my talk Mm -hmm. um, this kind of thing. So, yeah, I've had to do a lot of self-examination um, because I do bring quite a spiritual aspect into what I what I teach. And so, right. you know, just learning what works and learning that feeling guilty for not meditating doesn't serve anybody. Right. <laughs> you know, so that right. Just, it's like when I do those things that I know are good for me. That's all like bonus, you know. And if yes. I don't do them. It's just we're still, like, neutral, you know, like, everything's yeah. still fun. All good. Yeah, still I good. like that. 
I love that. Um, well, Flora, it has been such a pleasure to talk with you um, and having known having taken part in your e-course and known a bit about your process to hear a bit more about the the woman behind it and the process behind all of it. It's really been such a pleasure. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I would love to give you the opportunity here too to, to share anything that might be coming up for you and also let ev anybody who hasn't found your work yet know where they can find it. Absolutely. Well, um, we're just finishing up an e-course right now, the next one. They're five weeks long. Um, the next one starts at the end of September, so it's a nice fall time activity for those of us in this hemisphere. <laughs> um, my work can be found on my website um, and in various galleries, but probably the easiest place to see it is on my website, and that's um, Brave Intuitive U, like Y-O-U, mm -hmm. dot com. And yeah, I've got all sorts of paintings and workshops and everything's announced there on my website so beautiful and your book can be found on Amazon or beautiful. local bookstores yeah. and things like that too which I highly recommend to everybody as well um, thank you so much Flora thank you so much and have um, I look forward to connecting with you again soon you too thanks so much Kelly.